Welcome everybody to this video and today we're going to be taking a little look at this book. It's really bright sunshine, uh, maybe too bright for a video, I don't know, we'll see how we get on. The Complete Guide to Drawing and Illustration, a practical and inspirational course for artists of all abilities. So this was written by somebody called Peter Gray, I was just checking him out on Amazon there. because It says he lives in a lovely Suffolk market town with a pleasant family. And he's got a website, Peter Gray Illustrator. .co.uk so you can check that out if you want to see what other stuff he's up to but essentially yes here's one of his books um, published by Capella it's um, paperback this has got like a plastic cover on it um, and actually got this from a from a charity shop it was just two pounds I think that was a good bargain and I like it it's really got some really clear instruction and examples throughout about everything to do with you know illustration basically and art on the back it says there's more than a thousand illustrations, 1,000 illustrations, all practical sort of step-by-step -step guides to doing stuff, very hands-on. The RRP is 12 99 you can still buy this, of course. Um, and in the front, curiously, it says, it says, it's got a little note here, hand-scribbled to Kitty. Love from Leslie, Lincoln, Kim, June, and Tony. It's a lot of people. Christmas 07, so if you're watching any of those people, hello, and this is your five minutes of fame. Actually, it might be more than five minutes. We'll see how we get on. Anyway, let's have a look inside the complete guide to drawing and illustration. So it's got first marks, talking about equipment, etc. Then we've got objects and observation, nature's landscape, uh, going to town, making faces, the human figure, creating characters, the animal kingdom. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's some good sections there. So it's a bit about landscape. Uh, drawing landscapes and then quite a bit about faces and then the figure anatomy and sort of moving on to sort of characters and animals people always want to draw animals don't they so here's an introduction i won't read all that but you could if you owned it uh, so the first marks i don't know anyone who actually uses a stanley knife to sharpen a pencil i mean i'd probably just end up like in a and e if i tried that so i personally wouldn't recommend that but maybe you know all seasoned artists will swear by that as a method for sharpening pencils, I don't know. For most people, you know, one, a pencil board at your late local newsagent or supermarket would probably suffice. So here's some shapes, basic materials and equipment. Again, the, the, the deadly knife is pictured here. I think a pencil sharpener would be fine. Um, but it's talking about what you need here. So pencils, um, by the way, it's, listen to that. I don't know if you can hear the wind on this video. It's incredibly windy up, there's a storm I think it's Storm Dudley in the UK and it's it's blowing a gale. Um, you need an eraser, obviously, for when you make mistakes. You need some paper. Any old cheap paper will do, but obviously if you can afford nicer paper, then it's an improved drawing experience. Uh, and a sharpening device, we've been through this. Something safe, preferably. So before starting, you need to think about a few things. The eye, you need good lighting conditions so you can actually see. He's suggesting uh, doing it in daylight or with some bright light. And if you need spectacles, wear them, he says. Also, the mind. Make sure that you're in a good state of mind. You're meant to enjoy drawing. It's not meant to be a stressful experience and you may make some mistakes. So make sure you're in the right mind frame before you start. And the hand, he talks here about um, holding a pencil and it being slightly different when you're drawing to perhaps how you would write. So you clamp a pencil very tightly towards the end, don't you, when you're writing, but with, a, with, with drawing and illustration, you can hold it more looser and a bit further down. Um, this is a, a highlighted general purpose grip here, good for mapping out faint lines and sweeping curves. Um, and here's some other ways you might want to hold it using your thumb as well. Um, this is good for making bold angular sh uh, mark making and heavy shading, putting down pressure. Um, this is a bit more like a writing grip, uh, this is good for fine detailed work, for drawing a small sketchbook on small work. And here, held at the tips, uh, you can produce very subtle lines and shading. So there's a few different ways you can hold your pencil, I like that. Lines and guides, well here we go, look, this is basically just talking about different lines, um, lengths, strengths, this kind of thing. There's a little um, sort of exercise you can do. You're, you're writing the words PG, I presume that's for Peter Gray, but you could use your own initials. Uh, and starting off with a box and doing it like that. Shapes, children's drawings tend to not be accurate, but they have qualities of directness and free expression that adults would do well to capture. Inter that's true. P 
Picasso stated he had spent most of his career trying to draw like a child. I think he succeeded in some of them, don't you? But yeah, I like that. That's a bird, penguin, whatever it is. The third dimension, this is talking about working in 3D, something that young children can't do. They have to get to a certain stage don't you, before they can start to think and draw in, in a 3D way. But there's a little 3D house, beautiful. Spheres and ellipses. You can do lots with those, can't you? This is a long book, and I'm realising if I carry on waffling about every single page, this video is going to be about three hours long. So I'll just, just sort of skip through a bit. Um, okay. So we're now onto the section about objects and observations. So it's drawing sort of things that you can see, uh, still life, uh, different shapes, putting shading on. Okay. He's got a bit here about using your thumb and a pencil to judge angles and, and distances, judging proportions. You see artists holding up a pencil, don't you? Sometimes you wonder what they're doing. That's, that's what they're doing. Keeping it simple, that's nice, isn't it? They are simple, nice, simple lines. Just the outlines and constructional details. It says, don't be tempted to add anything more to your drawings. I do that, I'm guilty of that. I'll draw, I'll draw something like that, and then I'll start putting some shading on. Before you know it, shading all over the place. Organic form, so this is about drawing vegetables in a bowl. We've all done that, haven't we? Well, most of us, perhaps. Composition. Very important that it's all very well being able to draw well, but if your composition's wrong and it feels unbalanced and awkward, that it's not actually you know pleasing to look at at the end, is it necessarily? Texture. These are good. I like these examples. I like the fact that um, they're very clear and uh, very clean as well. I would say the layout's clean. It's uh, you've just got little blocks of text and big illustrations. So I, I like the way this is. Sort of laid out and put together it's easy to follow and understand so introducing ink and using a brush here wow yeah you're getting some really dark blacks now and with the ink decorative design I'm going to skip on a bit this is still in the objects and observations uh, chapter let's move on and see what else we can see because there's a lot of still life objects filling the frame this is nice very nice I'm admiring Peter Gray's skills. Nature's landscapes. We've finally reached the landscape -y chapter. So he's talking about the composition within the frame again here. Changing perspectives. Yeah, I suppose you can, you know, move up and down a hillside to get a different viewpoint. Pick the one that you like best. Aerial perspective. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, as you can see, you know, this is a good book. Um, if you're into drawing and sketching and illustration, there's a lot to see and do in here. I'm going to have to go back and read this, uh, you know, take my time and actually digest it because for the purpose of this video I'm having to skip through. I really like these shadows. Great composition there. Yeah, Good uh, contrast and tone. So yeah, I'm going to go back and have a good look through this uh, because I will be able to glean a lot. Okay, now we're on to a bit about perspective here, going into town. So now we've got more like urban urban lines uh, and constructs to, to think about. Where's your vanishing point? Have you, is there one or is there more than one vanishing point? This might be one of these uh, Suffolk towns that he lives in. Who knows? So uh, here we go, two point perspective. This is all very good. Very nice. Multiple vanishing points. Now we're on to cars. Oh, one, that's one thing I've not done much of at all because I always just really struggled. So I've really not drawn any vehicles in my in my life. Three-point perspective. Oh my gosh, getting very complicated. That looks like a, a crazy camera lens shot. Of course it's not. It's an illustration. So let's skip on. Construction of the head. Oh, we're, we've got to the making faces chapter. This is something I'm particularly interested in. I've enjoyed trying to do portraits um, and of course you've got to get the positioning of the make the features right or well it's just not going to look like the person you're supposed to be drawing is it if you don't get that right so getting the proportions and the placement of the individual facial features correct is paramount it's talking about drawing it slightly to the side and adding tone ah uh, yeah and then of course 
small children and babies have got such a fat face, a very different uh, shape to their face than older kids, teenagers, it starts to stretch out until you get to old age. Drawing from live models. Rapid sketching. Yeah, this is challenging, isn't it? Just trying to get down an expression or something in, in a few seconds just with the very minimal amount of strokes. That's a skill. I like the lighting here. Very cool. How's he doing this? So he's using charcoal and white chalk on mid-grey paper. That's cool. So you're able to get the, 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 the sort of the lighting highlights with the, the, ch the white chalk there. Oh my gosh, what a face. Great. So that's a good tip. Get some grey paper, some charcoal and some chalk. And, and off you go. A portrait in, in felt tips, I think that said. Mm. Like that too, different style. Lots of different styles and ways of uh, approaching that. Now we're onto caricatures. Always amazed by those people you see in sort of city centres who uh, you know will sit and uh, do a caricature of someone they've never even seen before. It's always amazing. I think it's like the human figure. So now we're homing in on anatomy specifically, musculature, <coughs> very muscly proportions. Again, this is talking about how the proportions change as a as the subject ages. Um, have a look, look, a toddler has got what five heads in their body, whereas uh, like a, a fully grown adult may have seven and a half. Something to bear in mind. Body, different types of body as well. Yourself as a model, using yourself as a model. You can obviously use um, you know, images, you know, from the internet and whatnot your own photographs of other models if you don't want to draw yourself. Lots of different poses and angles. The hands. There's always a section in these kinds of books about hands because hands are just so, I don't know, difficult, aren't they? Complex, so infinitely movable. And feet are not, feet are kind of similar too. They're not quite as extreme. It's hard to draw feet and hands. I think most people agree with that. Going up in scale. Clothes, folds and wrinkles. I like doing these sorts of things. So there's a tight fitting sort of top, and there's a very baggy one, a Santa style. Loose fitting. Okay, what have we got here? Bamboo pen and ink. Don't really know much about that. Sketching children. It says it pre presents particular challenges and rewards. Um, it's a tendency to draw them as miniature adults. In fact, a child's proportions and posture are quite distinct. Make and take many spoilt drawings to master. Yes, definitely. You can't just draw a small person and call it a child. That don't work. Right, from waxwork to artwork. I'm sorry that I'm skipping through, but as I said, I can't talk for too long on each page. Body language. But hopefully you get a good sense of this book and there's plenty to see if you're not even really interested in listening to my waffle. Yeah, superheroes now. Cartoon figures in action. Expressions. You can have some fun with expressions, can't you? Taking it to the extreme. Look at the size of that mouth. Or that mouth. The Animal Kingdom. There's a small section at the back here about specifically about animals. And how to draw a horse there, look. Cats. I've drawn a few cats in my time. And other animals using pastels, etc. Mm, these are nice, like a crab claw, these birds. Yeah, oh, little dog, pets. They're a good thing to draw, aren't they? Because uh, you've got instant access to animals in your home. And you tend to care about them too, so drawing something and having it on your wall is a nice thing to do. Right, there's the index. It's quite long, because it's quite a long book. It was just over 300 pages long, in fact. Brilliant. And that brings us to the end of this video. So we've had a look through um, this book. It's very good. Lots, lots in there to, to uh, learn from. Um, some really clear, practical advice for any budding illustrators. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.